Hello and good evening, everyone, investors and viewers alike. Uh, with you from uh, Tikmil Ali Ahmedi, uh, discussing the webinar series over uh, and above what futures are, how they're used in the capital markets, and what Tikmil has to offer uh, to you as an investor and trader with their futures products. Once again, good evening, and I hope everybody is doing well and has had a good week over the last week since we last spoke uh, within their accounts and trading portfolios. Without further ado, we'll get started. Uh, we're going to be discussing this evening uh, the expire, expiration dates and obligations, how the expiry dates are calculated, uh, what mechanisms are used, and then at the same time, uh, at the same time, what are your obligations as the trader or the investor? Uh, because this is not an option. This is a futures contract, so there are obligations that have to be and must be uh, fulfilled and abided by. As a recap. What we want to do is this is our uh, fifth webinar. Uh, as a recap, the very first one we went over, we discussed what futures are. And uh, every single webinar, I, I like to express it again and say that I like to keep the information and the flow of information very informal. I don't like to read directly from the screen. I like to have it conversational so that you can have a, a, a more of a dialogue feel of what's, what's taking place and what we're discussing. But so what futures are, uh, once again, they are contracts that obligate uh, an investor or trader to a specific commodity or security or whatever asset class that's available within the futures market to commit to or obligate themselves to that specific price at a future date in time. How are futures used in the capital markets? Again, you can either be a hedger, depending on what type of portfolio you may be managing, if it's your own portfolio, a, a corporate portfolio, an investment portfolio of any sort, uh, you use futures to hedge or protect yourself against any sudden or severe uh, unexpected losses and or speculation. Speculation doesn't need any um, intro to what that means. Uh, how to value what a value, uh, what, the, what the value is and how to value the tick value in each of the contracts in the futures contracts available because each asset class, it's not the same for every single type of um, asset. The gold tick uh, value is not the same as the S&P 500 tick value and S&P 500 tick value is not the same as the oil, et cetera, et cetera. So understanding we went over that, what the size usually per, uh, per contract, we used a couple examples last week where uh, gold as uh, one contract is, is valued at 100 ounces of gold uh, and what its tick value was. And oil is uh, 1,000 barrels. Each contract is equivalent to 1,000 barrels of crude oil. And then what contracts are traded in the futures market? Last week, we also discussed the depth of the asset classes available from the interest rate markets to the uh, agricultural markets, to the energy markets, to the FX markets, to the commodities and metals markets, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I went through the list. I showed you the snapshot on, on screen. You can go to Tickmill's website and you could uh, easily look up and see what's available, what they have available. And they also have available on their website as well, the, uh, the spec list or the specification list that gives you uh, the value of each tick and contract size and so forth. And for this evening, again, we'll be discussing what the expiration dates mean and what the obligations are uh, to you, the investor, which you must adhere to as these are mandated uh, coming from the exchange themselves. Okay, so these are not made up by uh, Tickmill or anyone else. Uh, expiry dates. If you have ever looked or seen uh, uh, looked at or seen a futures contract, you will see, for instance, crude oil, its code is CL. And then right behind the CL, you will see one of these letters here, either an F, G, H, J, K, M, N, Q, U, V, X, and Z. Very confusing. I know at first, but these stipulate which month that particular futures contract is going to expire. So it would say CL, for instance, 
in December CLZ 2022. So that way, when you're looking at that particular chart or that particular futures contract, you know that it's crude oil. It's a futures contract because it's got a future date on it with the calendar year. Now, we know also, which we'll be able to see further, uh, each and every single expiry date is the third Friday of each of these months. So if you have a contract that is, for instance, January with the letter F, CLF 2023, then it will be the third Friday in January of 2023 when that expiry date uh, on that contract is due or the obligation uh, of cash settlement takes place. Futures contracts, I just mentioned on the third Friday of each and every single month, I gave you that example already. Now, depending on your investment strategy or your portfolio, you may need several different or several futures of the same. It could be different or the same futures contracts to accommodate your strategy, and you will need to layer your contracts accordingly. So you don't leave yourself unexpected, unexpected, unexpectedly exposed. So from this angle, when I say layer your contracts, you can say, okay, I have a position that I need to protect. I'm long or short a specific commodity, asset, currency, whatever it may be, and I want to protect myself. I want to hedge 50%. I'm willing to take a 50% loss. I don't want to take, I don't want to get out of my position, but I need to protect myself at least 50% in case something happens unexpected, unexpectedly. And this is what I need to do. As time goes by, when you have a futures contract, you'll realize the profitability and or losses on a daily basis, uh, not realize, but you'll see them on a daily basis as the market price changes with the underlying asset. The thing that gives you a bit of, I don't know, I don't know if comfort or luxury is the right word, but you have the ability to know that you have that contract for its specific amount of time. Nobody can take that away from you. So you can be uh, long or short a specific asset uh, naked without any type of uh, options or futures to help hedge your position. And if the market goes up or down, regardless, whether it's in your favor, you're making money. If it's not, you're losing money, uh, but you need to have your strategy in place. Now, this is where the futures come in to help protect your strategy and make you money at the same time while limiting, limiting your losses. Now, what happens at expiry or any trading day prior to the uh, expiry date, you have the ability to close out that contract. And you can close out the contract and it's a cash settlement. Depending on what the balance is, uh, we're gonna discuss further what initial margin is and what maintenance margin is in this discussion this evening with the expiry dates. So we all get a better an idea of how it would work. I'll give you, I got some examples for everyone as well. But the, uh, the ability to close out with a cash settlement when you want, if you're happy with the profit or the result of what you're looking for. But if for any reason you do forget and you let it run, it will automatically it will automatically expire on its expiry date, and it will settle with it will settle uh, uh, accordingly with the with the cash position, whether it's a profit loss or or gain. Now, let me make this screen a bit bigger. This is off of Tickmill's website. And now we're gonna get into specific examples, what initial margin means, and what the maintenance, the exchange maintenance margins mean. Okay, so right here, I think I've made it big enough. I'll make it a little bigger so everybody can see. This is right off of the, the website from Tickmill. So you can uh, immediately use as a reference but here in this black box here, this is the uh, New York exchange, okay? And this is the crude oil. Remember one contract is equivalent to 1000 barrels. 
uh, 1,000 barrels of oil. And if you were just to, we'll get into an example later, but do the simple math. If you were to buy and purchase a, a thousand barrels of oil at today's price, which it's currently trading right now at $101.14, you would need to dish out $101,000 in order to take a position in uh, one contract of crude oil. But with margin accounts, the initial, the exchange initial margin with NYMEX is $11,825. That means you can purchase this one contract, take a position with one contract for this amount, which is roughly almost 10% of the value, if you look at it a little less, but plus or minus 10%. And that's what you need to initially be, you have to invest and pay to take the position. This last column is the maintenance, the exchange maintenance margin. That means you take a position in this particular contract at $11,825. We'll go back to the specifications down, in, down further in this particular uh, presentation this evening. You'll be able to see exactly what I'm referring to so you can calculate the tick value. But at any point in time, if your account with this particular contract hits the value of $10,750 on this contract, you will receive a phone call and they will ask you to make a maintenance margin call. That you either got to put up more money to keep the position or you can just say, you know what, go ahead and close it and you close it out for the loss. You want to keep it open, you've got to feed it. You've got to keep that position fed so that you don't keep getting these maintenance margin calls from the exchange. These are coming from the exchanges and these are automatically automated and there is no way around them. This is why it's obligatory and it's also very, very important for you to understand uh, the, the, the depth and the sophisticated, the, 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 the sophistication dealing with these futures contracts. I'm gonna slide it down just a little bit. I'm gonna get a quick sip of water if you don't mind. So you can see here, uh, while I'm getting my water, I've circled for you also what an E-mini crude oil, what its margin is, its maintenance margin, initial margin. This is the initial margin and the maintenance and what E-mini gold looks like. Excuse me. All right. So these are also more examples of off of Tickmill's web website web page. What's available? Get this out of the way. And what the initial margin would require, and what the maintenance margin level would be. Okay. So here you can see here's an E mini Nasdaq. Here's an E-mini natural gas and an E-mini S&P 500, which I'd circled on this particular page. There's no reason, rhyme or reason I circled these, but uh, since these are, let's say, well-known or more well-known amongst traders and investors, just so that it, I could bring it out to your attention. Now, uh, further, you got the NASDAQ, you got the E-mini S&P 500, you got the micro gold and you have micro silver. And then again, you can see here on the far right side what the initial margin would be and at what point or what level would require a maintenance margin call. When I say maintenance margin call, it's you will receive a phone call or receive notification that, hey, Ali, your position with micro, your, your micro silver position has hit 1900. You, what are you going to do? You're going to add more money? Are you going to liquidate other assets to? to keep the maintenance margin above its maintenance margin level, or do you want to close it out? And then you got to give them that decision at that point in time, right then and there. If your position never ever reaches a maintenance margin call or maintenance margin level period, then it's up to you to monitor the level uh, and the, the uh, valuation of the contract during the course of its lifespan. <clears throat> and you decide when you want to close it and or let it run to expire depending on what your portfolio strategy is. 
All right. Unless here's an here's an interest rate example uh, with the 10 year Treasury note, the initial margin and also the maintenance margin call. Now, let me make this a little bit smaller so we can get it all on the screen. There we go. Now, but I want um, I'm going to enlarge it again so you can see these contract specifications. Don't worry. But what I want everybody to understand here uh, within your position, the cost of the initial margin, how much is it going to cost you, the investor or trader, to take a particular futures contract out on the asset that you want? You need to understand the value behind each, how the tick value is valued on that specific futures contract. You need to understand the exchanges maintenance, uh, required maintenance uh, uh, requirement levels, uh, the margin levels there, just in case things don't move your way immediately, they may touch the maintenance margin level, which would like I just repeated earlier, uh, may require you to add more capital to keep the position or you decide to close it. And then the expiry date, you've got to understand how expiry dates are important and how they can and, uh, be layered in several different factors as uh, you know, you can use a, a ladder where you can have futures contracts lay, laddered out or layered out uh, every three months for expiry. That way you're constantly covered. Um, this is not advice. This is just strategy to where you can think about your particular position, your particular portfolio, and depending on whether you're speculating or hedging, there are many different ways uh, that you can use uh, futures to your benefit uh, and your portfolio's benefit. Now I'm going to enlarge this so we can look at these specifications. There we go. So here is crude oil. Like I said earlier, one contract is a thousand barrels. The tick value, you're looking at one cent and one cent, 0.01 tick value is equivalent to $10, okay? So every time, now, crude oil is trading at 100 spot 78 currently at the moment on my screen that I'm looking at over here. It goes up from 100 spot 78 to spot 79, that's $10 profit on that particular contract. If it goes down to spot 77, that's a $10 loss on that particular contract, okay? The E-mini crude, they call it mini because you don't, this contract size is only 500 barrels and its tick value is at spot 025 and its value is $12.50. So every time crude oil itself, the price moves spot 025 ticks, that's equivalent to a $12.50 move in your account depending on what type of position you have, okay? Now, this is also located on Ticknell's website for you to be able to uh, access. And you can look at all the specifications, contract specifications available for all the contract sizes uh, uh, from, for instance, uh, you have mini gold, micro gold, you have micro silver, mi uh, uh, mini silver, uh, crude oil, we saw just E-mini oil, and you so forth. You can see the E-mini S&P 500, the micro S&P 500, and the other products that they have. And then you can then start to formulate, ah, okay, this is what my portfolio consists of. These are the products that would help either hedge or further speculate to further enhance uh, the risk, if you will, uh, further enhance profitability, but be mindful of the possible losses as well. Now, initial margin, what does this mean? You need to understand, now. this is the, uh, the amount of capital that you have to come up with in order to take a position with a specific futures contract, depending on which exchange it comes from. Like I said earlier, each exchange has their own rules that we all must abide by as traders and investors. This is not anything filtered through Tick Mill or any other broker dealers that you may have experienced or are dealing with. This is mandated through the actual exchange themselves. And this requirement 
will say, okay, you're going to come in, you put in this initial margin, you put up the capital, you got to be mindful, you got to manage that position accordingly. And if for any reason that position moves against you and it starts to get close to that maintenance margin level, you will receive a phone call and it will say, Ali, you're getting close, just we're, we're letting you know, what do you want to do? Do you want to keep the position open or if it hits the maintenance margin level, do you want to close it? If you want to keep it open, we suggest that you go ahead and, and, and add some funds to your account now, or if you're going to close it, so be it. Once it hits the maintenance margin level, we'll go ahead and close it out for you. That's what the required maintenance margin level is, just underneath what I just explained of what the initial margin is. And this is the balance in which you will need to either deposit more capital into the position to keep it open or close it out for a loss. Each exchange has their own required maintenance margins for the futures contracts in which all traders and investors must abide by. Now we're getting into real life examples. So I know change drastic a bit spot what can I had the presentation this is to focus on a couple of things here. Sorry about that. There we go. So you can see up here in the upper right, oh, sorry, upper left corner, US oil. Okay. And then this is a CFD on the WTI West Tech, Texas crude oil. And this is coming from TradingView. But at yesterday's time of making the spot price for crude was at 94.15. It's trading today, it's up $6.42 and it's trading at 100 spot 71 at the moment, okay? Um, this was, this is a spot. Want to go in, broker dealer, tick mill has their own uh, uh, initial margin requirements, maintenance margin requirements, et cetera, et cetera, uh, to keep this position open. Now, you want to get into the futures aspect of it. Here's where I want you to look up in the upper left corner. You're going to see right up there, the letters CL, which stands, those are the, the abbreviations for crude oil. And then you'll see the letter Z. If you remember the very first, uh, at the beginning of the, of the presentation this evening, that letter table, when I see the letter Z, I know that this is the month of December and it's for the year 2022. So now I know that this is a crude oil December expiry of 2022 futures contract. It was trading at $90.12. So what we're going to do now, based on these two numbers, I've created a real life uh, example of how to go about as an investor or trader calculating your profitability and or your loss for this particular position. Okay, so if you were to take out a crude oil, one crude oil contract is a thousand barrels. And you would have to come up with, at the time of this, 94,000 and $150 if you wanted to buy uh, 1,000 barrels of oil. But with the initial margin, you would only have to come up with 11,825. Now, getting back to, here's the contract, you would buy the December one at $90.12. So the tick value, if you recall, as I was saying, is for each spot zero one move in the price of crude oil, its valuation is $10, okay? So in this example, if we use the spot price of 94.15 and we purchase, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and purchase this future right now. December expiry at 9012. And let's assume that the December expiry comes and the price of crude oil is exactly at 9415. What's happened to that particular position or this particular uh, uh, futures contract value wise? 
So just doing the simple math, if the spot price was the price of at expiry, how much profit or loss would we have in this particular position? It's very simple. You take the spot price, 94.15 minus your future price, which gives you a positive $4 or four spot 03. And then we would divide that by spot 01, which gives us 403 ticks. And we multiply 403 ticks by $10 because each tick value is $10. Then in this particular example, we would end up with $4,030 in profit in my account on this one particular contract alone, okay? So now you can start to see the depth and, and breadth of the volatility that can take place, the uh, amount of profitability and or loss that can take place. This is very serious. So um, if you look here, uh, remember I charted in earlier presentations, as inflationary talk was happening, and then the geopolitical tension happened uh, between Ukraine and Russia, you can see how it spiked, it spiked back down, and now it's settling into, we don't know what range, but it's very volatile at the moment. I mean, Anna, the, the, the Fed is coming out saying that there may go up 50 uh, basis points hike in the next meeting. So we have to keep that uh, on the table. Inflation is still getting higher in the States. The 25 basis points hike did not do anything to curb or slow down the inflation issue in the United States markets. Now, the cost of raw materials and metals and raw goods is also increasing. Um, oil, we've discussed it several times, and gold several times, the volatility based on the geopolitical tension, but we don't know what's on the table, what could happen geopolitically politically if it gets to the point where uh, Russia decides to turn off the taps completely just to show that they can or what if they come up with um, an agreement they come up with a negotiation and settlement and all hostilities uh, stop what will happen then in theory you would think that the price would drop if you, if, if you think that things were to continue to get worse and worse to the point where uh, Russia turns off the, uh, the, the, the gas and oil pipes to the EU and European nations that it's providing their services to, you would think that the oil would spike immediately. In theory, we would all be correct, but we all should go to if it will happen or will happen. So this is the speculation part. So based on your own portfolio, uh, and what positions you have, this is a prime opportunity. This is a prime market for each and every one of us to understand basically more about what futures are, but also not be scared of them. Once you understand something, there's no more fear to be scared of. You just have to understand how volatile they can be and know how to use them. And they're a perfect, perfect uh, security and form of investment to help uh, traders, investors. Uh, this is another example uh, where gold, if you look up here, gold was trading yesterday. Gold right now is currently trading at 1979 spot 60. At the time I was making this presentation yesterday, it was trading at 1956 spot 90. So it's up a little bit today, uh, roughly 30, 31 points. Um, and if we look at on the upper left corner, you'll notice again, you'll see the letter Z. Where is it? There you go. You'll see the letter Z behind GC and then Z there. I know that I'm looking at a gold contract and the month Z represents the month of December. So it was trading at 1982. So same example as we did in oil. If we were to look at say, oh, okay, gold is trading at 19, uh, 1956 spot, and I want to take, uh, take a position to carry it through a futures contract to the through December, and the December price is trading at 1982. You know what? I'm going to take it. So I purchased the December contract, 
at 1982, right? This obligates me, I'm stuck to this price, okay? Now, from now till December, it will fluctuate depending on the value of gold, of course, but let's assume I hold it till expiry date, which is the third Friday of December. And lo and behold, it ends up right back at the same price the spot was when I bought the contract of 1956. What would happen to my position there? Just like we looked at oil earlier, oil would have given you a $4,000 profit, $4,030 profit. But if you do the math on this one, on this particular exchange, the value is, the tick value is 0.25. Spot 25 is equivalent to $12.50. So basically you take 1956 spot 90, which is the spot price, you subtract your future contract price of 1982 spot 80, which gives you a deficiency or a negative of 25 spot 90. You divide that by spot 25, the tick value, and that gives you 103 spot six ticks. And you multiply as in 50 cents, this particular position would have created, if I had gone long, $1,295 loss. If I had gone short, it would have given me 1,295 profit. Same thing for oil. We used the, the long example, but if I had gone short, it would have been negative $4,030. So this gives you uh, an idea. Now we know what the letters mean. So you need to know what the symbols are, obviously. Uh, the letters mean which month, which year they expire. Uh, you're going to see a different, you will most all the time see a difference between where the actual price of the indices, the treasuries, the, the agriculture commodity, the metals, uh, gas and oil, their actual spot price will be different than the futures contract price because you've got to take in several factors that we've mentioned before come in on when it not just time value of money but you're talking about cost to carry insurance uh, uh manufacturing cost etc cetera, etc cetera. all of these come into play um, into the futures contract what are it's a little smaller what are are the key takeaways from this evening's episode one you must, everybody needs to know, obviously, what you are investing and trading within your portfolio. You, you just, you need to know, you need to understand and why, and know why. Just, is it a trend? You see something happening, fear of missing out, like they call in FOMO, that's happened with cryptocurrencies. Oh, everyone's making money, I got to throw in. And next thing you know, is it's, it's almost like a curse. As soon as you put in your money into a position, because it's been making so much money for everybody else. It seems as soon as you put your money into a position, bam, it goes against you. Do your research, know what you're going to invest in and why, or know what you're going to trade and how you're gonna trade it and why. Then going back, do your, own do your own due diligence based on your own research. There's a lot of information out there not only over the, in so many different social media platforms, uh, 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 th connectivity platforms and television programs, YouTube, there's just a, 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 a huge amount of resources available for you to grab information from in order for you to get a better picture of, it, of what it is that you wanna be involved in. Make your own assessment. You can like how people may be opinionated in one way and how they explain their viewpoint on why they should do this, that, or the other. And you may not like someone else's view or how they say they should do this, that, and the other. And you learn, you learn how to find what you more are, let's say, uh, gravitating towards, uh, what type of information you like to read and how you understand it and digest it better than others. And then you're able to formulate your own uh, idea and your own strategy as to what you think you should be doing within a specific asset class. Once you've done that, then it's very easy for you to say, okay, here's my strategy. Boom. How can I protect myself? The, the object of the investment 
investment and trading world is what? It's to make money. It's to, it's to make money. No one does it to lose money. So how can I make money with the least amount of risk? And this is where the futures come in. The futures contracts come in to help you hedge. And this is where you're able to pick and choose what type of instruments you want. You have to have 100% hedge. You can have 25, 50, 75, 80% hedge so that if any sudden or unforeseen event or uh, a miscalculation in the actual market, uh, some report came, came out better or worse off than it was supposed to be, and it sends the market into a frenzy, you need to make sure that your position is protected so that your objective is to have your portfolio make money. And how can you protect it? How you can protect it or hedge it using uh, more sophisticated investment securities like and then once you do that then you'll realize that you're going to need more than one futures contract depending on the size of your portfolio obviously uh, but for the more sophisticated investors and larger portfolios and larger positions that do, do need hedging uh, we're talking at, at the institutional level um, uh, you know pretty big portfolios, they have to have a layer or ladder system of futures contracts in place so that it's not just one futures contract and they're letting it ride on this position. It depends because uh, depending on when you're buying and selling, if you're buying and holding for the long haul, are you buying and selling and day trading during the day? So you only want to head yourself during the day, then you're going to close out your position and you're not going to keep your futures contract open and over. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Just for instance, uh, you know, I think, you know, I'm looking now S P right now is trading at 4432. Uh, and I think it's going to close out at the year, even though it's down 5% at the end of first quarter of 2022, I think it will rebound and it will end up being 10% higher from this point. So I'm going to go ahead and make a contract. Then you can take one contract and speculate. But, but the more sophisticated your portfolio is, uh, the more futures contracts you'll have involved layered in. And this is what I mean by layered in uh, with your hedge protocols in case of any sudden or negative event that takes place. And I always like to leave with a quote, famous quote of the day. Uh, for this evening, the stock market, which is pretty fitting for what we just discussed, the stock market is filled with individuals who know the price of everything, but the nothing. Okay, this is said by Philip Fisher, who was an American stock investor back in the day, and he was a well-known author for uh, the book Common Stocks and Uncommon Profits, a guide to investing that has remained in print since it was first published back in 1958. So it's been around a little over 60 years. came from, which is also adds a little bit more information and resources to what we discussed this evening from the top 100 money quotes of all time that was printed out uh, in November 15th of 2020. And this is another testament to the fact that investing without education and research will ultimately lead to regrettable investment decisions. Research is much more than just listening to popular opinion. And that's exactly what I just ended up on with the key takeaways uh, uh, is knowing what it is that you want to invest and why, how to use the futures, do your own due diligence, not just popular opinion. You're not just going to see, oh, Mad Money said this is a good hot stock. I need to buy it. Mad Money says gold is going to be three thousand dollars. I got to buy it. No, uh, you if you just can't be all over the place. You got to be disciplined. You got to be structured, and more importantly, you've really got to. You don't have to spend all day. People like me spend a lot of the time understanding what's taking place in the market, but. You don't have to spend as much time, but you need to be disciplined in the amount of time that you do spend 
And when you spend, it becomes a repetitive pattern day by day, week by week, month by month. You will then start to see the difference and reap the rewards and benefits of your discipline based on the research that you do and take the positions that you choose and, and you're going to lose some. You're not going to win every time. You're not going to lose every time either. But this is what makes markets. And this is what you got to do in order to be successful. I'm going to leave it here tonight. Uh, uh, I spoke a little longer than I usually do. I hope everybody has a good evening. And we have holidays coming up. Happy Easter to all of those celebrating Easter this weekend. And happy Easter. We'll be on schedule for next Tuesday, inshallah, as well. Uh, so happy Easter for this weekend. First, I'll go ahead and get out the happy Easter for the following weekend. And then after that, uh, will be the coming to the close of Ramadan as well. So Ramadan Kareem to everyone that is fasting and happy Easter to everyone that is celebrating this weekend and or next weekend and have a safe uh, week in trading the mark uh, do good Friday. So keep that in mind. So we have two more trading days this week uh, to uh, so if you didn't know that now you do. And I'm going to leave it for any last minute questions. Does anybody have anything that they want to uh, ask or share? Now is the time. Going once, going twice. All righty. Good evening and good luck. <laughs>